have the right to be free, and you don't have to take what the devil has to offer. God is for you and not against you. We thank God, amen, for everything that he's doing. And we thank God for the service that we had. Amen. We also uh, thank God for the Jesus Faith Deliverance Church. Hallelujah. Just believe God. Amen. Thank God for them, their prayers, their support. Amen. All, all, the, all the ones who've given and who has uh, wonderful comments and everything. Keep our co workers in prayer. Amen. We, everything is going well, even though we're operating short. But thank God that there's been no injuries and things are going well. Hallelujah. Amen. I know that your time is, is very valuable, so we're going to go straight to the Word of God for the people of God. Amen. The foundation of Scripture is coming out of the Gospel of Matthew, the 8th chapter, verses 1 through 4. And it reads, When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded thee for a testimony unto them. Hallelujah. If I could use for a title today, it would be the healing touch of Jesus. The healing touch of Jesus. As we look at this scripture, we see here that there was a man that had leprosy. And when you have a disease like leprosy, you lose everything. You lose everything because leprosy is very contagious. And so you would have to walk around with other lepers. You couldn't hang with nobody else but other lepers. And uh, you had to announce unclean, unclean. As you begin to walk, and, and and you couldn't live with your family, so you lost your family. Most of the time, they lost their trade, their job. They lost everything, and they begin to lose limbs and ears and different things. Very terrible disease. But we see here that this man, who had one of the worst diseases ever, leprosy, would worship. Hallelujah! Yeah. In the midst of lo losing. Everything Hallelujah. in the midst of not knowing that a body part was about to fall off until he smelt it yeah. because he couldn't feel. See, leprosy is a disease that you can't feel, that's right, that's right. and so he couldn't feel and going through all these things and then and, and waking up and leaving a part of his body still there. Jesus. He had a terrible life, yeah, but when he saw Jesus. He began to worship. Yeah. I wonder why we can't worship today when we don't have nothing going on like that. And, oh, and, and, and we can't lift up our mouth and worship. But yeah. we see the Christ. Yeah. We see the leper. The leper. Yeah. Right. And then he worshiped him saying. Yeah. He won't find out what he said. He worshiped him saying, Lord, mm -hmm. if thou will, yeah. Yeah. thou can make me clean. Yes. Yeah. In other words, he said, Lord, you can do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, you can turn my life around. I worship you because I know, That's amen, right. I magnify your name. Yes, he did. He began to worship him. Hallelujah. Opened up his mouth and he began to worship him. Right. Hallelujah. Gave him the highest praise in the midst of leprosy. Uh -huh. As we look at leprosy, we realize that the disease leprosy is very similar to a type of sin. And when they write it in the Bible, they write it as a type of sin. Because when you're full with sin, you can't feel. That's right. Like things are wrong. Ah, yeah. right there. You start doing stuff that you can't do, and you feel like it's okay to smoke this. It's okay to, to have many people laying around. It's okay to deal with all type of sex sins, yeah. addictions, stealing. You may make excuses, but you don't feel in your heart that it's wrong. And then there's somebody who used to feel or being convicted by sin, but you don't feel that way anymore. You're starting to get. The sinful leprosy. Because you can't feel. And so when you when you when you really get into uh, the sin and you get into addictions, you lose your family members. Because I found that when you start doing drugs and alcohol and things like that, you lose and it costs you everything. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately there's a divorce. Yeah. Homeless. 
vehicles. Everything is gone because the devil will take it, amen, and make you chase that drug into type of leprosy. Yeah, come on, come on. And although you may not announce unclean, they'll see you coming a mile away and say, there you come. You come to lock this up. There you come. There was a man that even at his brother's funeral, he stole the family's microwave yeah. to sell it to get high. That's how that drug is. Whether you want same sex or not, it will make you go that way. Say that. Say that. For money. For money. Because that's how that so he, so so sin is a type of leprosy. I mean, you will lose everything. People have lost everything. But in the midst of you losing. We need to follow this example. In the midst of all that's going wrong and, and things, when things are not going wrong in your life, begin to worship. Right. Begin to worship. He begins to worship. And he said, God, you're able. Hallelujah. He began to worship. Amen. At all times. At all times. In leprosy, he said, I bless the Lord at all times. Because you're good. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And then you see that Christ touched him. Even though leprosy was addicting, he touched him. The healing touch of Christ yes. to turn everything around. As we just look at this a little further, let's go into the Gospel of John, the 16th chapter, verses 7 through 8. And it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter, which is the standby, hallelujah, the comforter, Amen. Will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin concerning righteousness and concerning judgment. So reprove means to prove to you again. Yeah. Somebody that say somebody don't believe it. Amen. They said some people don't believe it stink. They don't believe it burn. <laughs> but God will prove it. It's something about when the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit comes, he can prove to you. Hallelujah. Amen. That's all right. No matter how, there's nobody too mean. There's nobody too, too, too addicted that God can't prove to them that what you're saying and convince them. Another translation says convince yeah. or to prove or to reprove. Right. Amen. There's proof in the power of the anointing of God. Hallelujah. We can, we can, we can preach all day, but if it's not an anointed preaching, okay. if the Holy Ghost is not there, people won't be convinced. But when, when the word is preached like it's supposed to, and the, and, and the hands are laid on you that has the touch of Christ in it, the healing touch, it will prove to you. Yeah. Many people, do, God has cleaned up many drunks. Yeah. God's cleaned up many people who are promiscuous. Amen. But he will prove yeah. that's the touch of Christ. If you're dealing and struggling with something and you know you in your mind you don't want to do it anymore. I mean, the Apostle Paul said, the thing that I do, I don't allow. Amen. But if you get into the place where you worship Christ in the midst of your wrong, worship him in the midst of your struggle, he'll begin to convince you. Amen. Things begin to make sense. Hallelujah. You begin to walk away and put things down you couldn't put down. It's all in worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to be convinced today. Yeah. Hallelujah. But it's in the presence of God, the comforter. Amen. Another translation says, spend close relationship with God. Amen. Stay in close relationship with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because your body's a temple of the Holy Ghost. And, and you can't get any closer than that. Tap into the presence of God inside of you and begin to worship. Hallelujah. In the presence of God. Hallelujah. And you'll feel the healing touch. Yes. Cleansing that sinful le leprosy. Yeah. Or whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're struggling with, amen. Because there's power in the anointing of God, even resurrection power. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God will do it. Let's go to 2 Peter, the first chapter. Look at starting verse 3. It says, Amen. His divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Mm -hmm. When you, when you get when Christ touches you with that healing touch, and some people get some people fall under the anointing. Some people experience anointing and begin to cry. Some people begin to laugh. Different, different people react different ways. But then his divine power yeah. comes into your life uh -huh. and gives you all things pertaining unto the life in God. All things that help you walk in God is. Yeah. Through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue, thereby given unto us exceeding. That means it can't be measured. When it's exceeding, you can't weigh it. You can't measure it. It's past all. It says exceeding great. Not just great, but exceeds great. And precious promises. Yeah, right. Divide these, you might be partakers of the divine nature. Hallelujah. Oh, what a great healing touch. Yeah, right. A healing touch can bring the divine.
divine nature of God inside you. When people see you, they say, that's a man of God. That's a woman of God. That's a child of God because his nature is all over yeah. and around you. Yeah. Thank God for that. Yeah. Thank Jesus. Thank Have you had your test today? <laughs> Amen. The divine nature. Yeah. And it says, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. Yeah. That corruption, amen, that will cause you to lose everything. That corruption that will cause you to have to keep on uh, telling everybody that you're sorry that you're drunk. You're sorry that you wrecked the car. You're sorry that you lost your job. All these different things happening. Sorry that you cheated. All the different things happening. But you can escape the corruption. You can escape it by the divine healing touch of Christ. Hallelujah. Let him touch you. Let him touch you. Let, let, let him touch you. Let him change. Stick around God long enough. And your real purpose will come manifesting. Stick along God long enough. And then life begins to make more sense. You'll find out your purpose in life. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Gospel of James. The first chapter starting in verse 13 says, Let no man say when he's tempted, he's tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted the any man. God's not tempting me. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away. Yeah. He's drawn away, amen, by his own lust and enticed. See, the, 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 the enemy will draw you away. That lust will draw you away from common sense. That'll draw you away and get you addicted into gambling and, and spend all your money on scratch offs and all your money trying to play the lottery and spend all this. You're drawn away from common sense. So you start using your, your, your mortgage money, your rent money, your, your, your car payment money, or your grocery money, all on, on gambling because you're drawn away. From common sense, you're drawn away from, from, from the standard of living. Amen. These things will draw you away. There's somebody who started off with just one beer, but they're starting to draw you away. So you got to have a drink to wake up. You got to have a drink to go to sleep. Amen. Every time something goes, it's raining, so it's time for a drink. It's a sunny day, so it's time for a drink. You have a funeral, you're sad, so it's time for a drink. When it's celebrating, it's somebody but it's time for a drink. Draw you away. And you begin to lose your driver's license because of DUI, or if you don't kill nobody while you're driving, all type of things. These lusts will draw you away, drawn away, amen, drawn away from your family, from, from, the, from the promise that you stood on wedding day and said, I do, and amen. And, and then you go, your sexual lust is drawing you away, and you break the covenant that you made with your husband or wife, being drawn away, amen. It says, but every man is tempted uh, when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is finished, it brings forth death. It brings forth death. And we don't want to speak death on nobody. We speak the word of God over your life that you shall live and shall not die. And that sinful leprosy is not going to take your life. Amen. You're struggling with addictions now, but you have a right to be free. Come on. Hallelujah. God will set you free if you allow him to touch you. Amen. You begin to worship him and allow him. Allow the healing touch of Christ to take the taste out of your mouth. Allow the healing touch of Christ to change your mind. Hallelujah. That means to repent. When you repent, that means you change your mind. You was going to go down there and do the scratch off, but you changed your mind. You kept your money. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> the healing touch. Hallelujah. Amen. Begin to enjoy God. Amen. Begin to, 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 to surround you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That means God's priority. He's priority. He's first. You enjoy the Lord. You enjoy worshiping God. You enjoy being in the presence of God. Psalm 37, starting at verse 4. I'm almost finished. But it says, delight thyself also in the Lord. Amen. You can have a good time. You start, you, you, you start by faith, but after a while, Hallelujah, you're just enjoying God. You're enjoying Jesus. You're enjoying the word. You're enjoying the fellowship with the saints. It says, delight thyself also in the Lord. So see, as you begin, as, as, as the lover begins to delight himself in the Lord, and he begins to worship God and tell God how good he is and tell God all the, all the wonderful things that he's able to do. Yeah. Delight thyself in the Lord. And then in your heart, that's what that, that, that sinful leprosy is. He will give you the desires of your heart. How are you? You begin to desire godly things. You begin to desire prosperous things. You begin to, begin to desire clean things. And that unclean spirit will leave you. It says, delight thyself also in the Lord. He shall give thee the desires of thy heart. And then number five, commit. Amen. Hallelujah. Get, get to the place where you're committed to serving God. Get to the place where Christ is in your life and you have a commitment. Hallelujah. So, Lord, I'm committed. Somebody say, Lord, I'm committed. Lord, I'm committed. Commit yourself. Commit that way.
praise unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Begin to worship God, and he's going to bring things to pass. He's going to bring those business plans to pass. Hallelujah. Those things you've been dreaming for. Those things you know that God has put into you. That leadership that God's put into you. Amen. Yes. The desire for that new home. That desire, hallelujah. Amen. For the right type of pay. So you can spend more time at home. All the different things. Hallelujah. He says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. We've got to trust. Trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. He will bring it to pass. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, I can imagine the leper. Going back home clean. Skin cleaned up, knocking on the door. Somebody looked at us and said, Look, there's your daddy. He's coming back home. Hallelujah. So God is bringing it to pass. God is bringing it to pass. He'll bring it to pass so you can drive in it. He'll bring it to pass so you can live in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is doing it. The healing touch. The wonderful healing touch of Jesus. Let him touch you because why? You don't have to take him in them as well. For God is for you, not against you. You have a right to be free. Yes. And that's the gospel truth. 